Hey there. So you have printed your printable PDF pattern and you want to make something and you have no idea how to start. I'm here to help you out. I am Bonnie Lewis and I am the designer of a sewing program, a very quick, easy, do it at your own pace, do it at home, six workshop program designed to help you learn how to sew that is um, fun, green, modern, and easy. So the foundation of sewing anything is, um, I know obviously how to use a sewing machine, but we're not talking about that today. Everything that's made started with a pattern. So today I'm gonna to show you a little bit about how to assemble a pattern. This is one of the patterns that I've designed. This is called the Raglan T. And um, I drafted the pattern for it, so I'm gonna use that. And I'm excited to show you how to assemble patterns using my pattern. Why don't we first start out with what I like to do first when I assemble a pattern. After I print it, I always check the scale box. Your pattern should always have a scale box. The scale box helps you to know if you've printed it at the right size. And another thing to be sure of when you print your pattern, always make sure that you are printing your pattern actual size, not size to fit or any special setting, just actual size because the, the, it changes. Even a slight change in the printing of the pattern can change the size of the pattern. And you wanna make sure your size is just right. So check your scale box. I'll check the, to make sure mine is two inches by two inches. And then I am going to tape my pattern together. You want to make sure that you have plenty of tape. I buy it at the dollar store. <laughs> I keep bins and bins and bins of it on hand because I'm always testing patterns. So let me show you how I lay out my patterns. Okay, so as you can see here, before I tape my pattern together, I like to lay it out just to see what I'm working with. And you can see that letters go across and numbers go up and down. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so now that you have your pattern all laid out, um, I am going to be taping this one together from top to bottom. Because as you saw when I showed you, I have seven pages going across, but only four pages going up and down. And I always choose to tape together the row that is shortest. So I don't make a rule out of going across first always or up and down first always. I lay it out, I look at it, and I say, what's the shortest? The reason for that is, as you put your pattern together, you're gonna to need to adjust it and you know, widget it a little bit to make it just right. And it's easier to adjust if you've put the shorter pieces together first, rather than having to take apart a whole big long line. You get it. So. One of the questions that's most commonly asked in common sewing is, where do I assemble the pattern? You see, your pattern pieces have these pale gray lines. They're all going to be a half of an inch in from the edge of the paper. Those are called alignment lines. And what that means, if you see a pale gray line, that means put the next pattern piece right up to that pale gray line and tape it there. When I do my first taping, I go ahead and I like to do just a soft taping. Like I said, I tend to adjust things after to make sure the lines are correct and running beautifully together. So I'm gonna take my first row together. I put this piece on top of the piece. I put C1 right beneath B1. I bring it right up to the alignment line and I just barely cover the alignment line. And then I'll do the same with D1. And the reason I'm taking time to tape this whole row together is I want to show you. All right. So I've taped this whole row together. And now you can see I've got one long continual alignment line. So I'll tape the two row together, A2, B2, C2, D2. And I'll put that right up and over the alignment line here. And so you just continue to assemble your pattern like that until the whole thing is taped together. And then you can tape it once you're confident that you like the way it looks, put a little bit more tape on it to make it sturdy. Now let's talk about sizing. You want to check your pattern for um, <clears throat> what measurements align with what size. So you take your measurements. Now patterns often 
um, don't reflect the actual human body. <laughs> Only 5% of humans are actually symmetrical. So as a tailor in the fashion industry for 20 years, um, you know, like traveling all over the world with brands to do photo shoots, uh, let me promise you, <laughs> it is true. Even, even seemingly perfect bodies are, are misaligned slightly and wonderfully imperfectly perfect. So what I want to tell you about choosing your size, because this is important. You're going to put a lot of time into this, so choose your size carefully. If you're between two sizes, you're more normal than abnormal, and I tend to go with the size up. And the reason for that is I can always tailor it down. And that's something I teach in my series. Every one of my patterns has a step where you stop, check it on your body, and tailor it just to you because that's, for me, why I learned to sew. So in any case, um, so you just keep going. And then once you've found your size, get a colored pen, you know, like blue or red or something a little show easy. You're going to notice on your pattern that... Um, each of the sizes, let's say I'm a large, I have my own special type of line. So mine is going to be the solid line. I will go through each one of the pattern pieces and I will trace the line that accords to my size so that when I cut it, I don't get lost in all those little lines. That can be really intimidating for new sewers. So just make it easy on yourself by taking time to do that. And then carefully cut it out. And cut your pattern, cut your fabric. Um, so thank you for joining me today. I hope this was helpful. And if you like learning with me, I have spent the last 20 years of my life putting together a program that can teach sewing. I've put together all the skills that I learned on the road tailoring as a fashion industry tailor to really boil it down to what are the basic things you need to know to make anything you want. And I sprinkle in little tips and little tricks that I learned you know, that I learned in the field um, that you won't find anywhere else. So I hope you do check out Common Sewing's New Basics Beginner Sewing Series. You will sew six simple projects with me and walk away with all the skills you need to confidently build for yourself anything you want. So thank you for joining me. I hope I see you in the series and happy sewing.